Good evening, what's going on there folks? It's the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this Monday, September 12th, 2022 day, uh, night. It is about 8 p.m. Uh, West Coast time here in California. Latest quake shows a 1.0 earthquake into the region. Uh, looks like right around the Southern California area, right there on the globe, the latest quake uh, listed here on the USGS map and the EMSC model. Let's go ahead and look at some activity happening on the flat scale Earth model here from the USGS. This is the last 24 hours of earthquake activity shown up here on the map. Latest one here, at least on these, uh, on this folks, uh, on this map is a 2.5 near the Kilauea volcano on the Big Island. This one coming in at about 2.8 kilometers deep. Looking at the all magnitudes map here, not a whole lot of difference. Most of the activity confined here to the Pahala area of the Big Island. No major changes though to take note of uh, out there in the uh, middle of the Pacific Ocean. So what do we got going on here? Uh, most of the activity today has been confined up to the Alaska area, the West Coast, and a little bit of movement once again around the um, Caribbean plate down into the South America area as well. Uh, the movement that we've seen over here uh, following that uh, large earthquake activity, 7.6, and the uh, movement along the Java Trench area has kind of slowed down a little bit. We did, though, have a 4.4 in this area. That's seen that 7.6 here just a, uh, um, a day or so ago now in the Papua New Guinea area. So aftershocks will continue for this region for uh, quite some time. Some movement earlier this afternoon as well with a 4.7. A little bit further to the northeast here, north of the Solomon Sea. Uh, so things still somewhat active here, but not quite as uh, active as we've seen here over the last uh, about 48 hours or so. And that goes for the same up here around the Japan Trench. This movement here uh, is from uh, earlier this morning. There was a 5.2 uh, into the Japan Trench here. Looks like that one coming in at uh, a couple hours or so ago. About 58 kilometers down into the Japan Trench. So things kind of uh, still somewhat active, but not as intense as we had been uh, watching for the most part here over the last couple days. Uh, up here in Alaska at a 4.0 this morning. And uh, also a little bit of swarming activity here in a little separate region. A um, couple small microquakes, including some uh, twos in there as well in this little swarming area uh, just north of the four-pointer that struck this morning time frame. Some movement also throughout the Cook Inlet and around Anchorage. Let's go ahead and check out the West Coast activity. Mount St. Helens seen a couple small microquakes. We'll check out the uh, Mount St. Helens map here in just a little bit. Uh, shortly after my update uh, this morning time frame, we've seen a 3.3 earthquake come in uh, into the Loyalton area, followed up uh, just a few months or a few uh, moments later with a 2.4. Very shallow depths here for these earthquakes, indicating some uh, surface fractures going on here along the fault. This uh, little fault system called the Mohawk Valley Fault Zone. Uh, not a huge fault, but it is up there in the Sierra Nevadas and um, north of Truckee. This area did see some activity last year. Uh, I can't remember the magnitude up here, but uh, looks like they're having a, maybe some more aftershocks or some uh, increasing seismic activity there in that region. Over here around the Pyramid Lake of Nevada, 1.3 coming in at 3.7 kilometers deep. Uh, the Bay Area, not a whole lot has changed. Uh, all this movement here from this morning time frame, looking at the rest of California, things just very minimal. Looks like a little earthquake there around the Little Lake area of California, north of Ridgecrest. Uh, a little sequence there of some aftershock activity from the uh, earthquakes back on July 4th and July 5th, 2019 date. Southern California, well, at least the uh, extreme Southern California area. A little cluster of quakes up against the San Andreas Fault, the uh, plate boundary here. Over here near the uh, Simi Valley area at a 2.6. That one coming in earlier this afternoon. Uh, 
Uh, we got one earthquake here on the North American side of the plate boundary of 1.1 coming in. No major swarms to report. No major unusual activity to take note of there around the San Andreas Fault, as uh, far as the southern segment goes. Uh, some scattered activity throughout western Nevada, southern Nevada as well. This movement here around Las Vegas from uh, earlier this morning time frame. Uh, aside from that, looking across east of the Rockies, <clears throat> excuse me, lost my voice there temporarily. Uh, Pecos, Texas, seeing some activity today, it looks like. A couple twos and even a couple threes in there as well. But uh, aside from that, just some spotty, very spotty activity throughout Oklahoma, and a couple of those are a query blast. Nothing showing up here on the Yellowstone seismographs, but uh, let's go ahead and check that out here real quick, see what we got for Yellowstone. We'll get back to that solar weather here in a little bit. By the way, we had an M-flare kick up here. Pretty cool. Uh, nothing going on across the board here at Yellowstone. Things are kind of tapering off pretty dramatically. This was from uh, late last night, early this morning time frame. Over the afternoon period, not a whole lot going on, folks, at, our, at all, as far as microquake activity goes. Uh, way up north here into Alaska. I know we didn't cover this. Let's go ahead and bring this back up. Had some activity. Uh, not too often do we see a movement way up north of the Brooks Range area, but uh, today we've seen a 2.5 and a 2.9. A ways away from these uh, little fault systems up north, but... Uh, Either way, definitely a little activity kicking up there on the northern part of Alaska today. All right, trimmer map tonight along the Cascadia subduction zone. 55 epicenters. A little bit of a downturn in the trimmer count tonight compared to the last couple of nights. Most of it there underneath the uh, southern Oregon area. Let's go ahead and check out Mount St. Helens here on the volcanic webby quarters. Let's see if we got any... Uh, movement to report here. I know there was a couple earthquakes there listed on the USGS map. And uh, there's definitely still a few uh, localized earthquakes there to the Mount St. Helens region over the last couple hours and also throughout the day today. Seen a couple uh, earthquakes in there as well listed on the map. Uh, and this has just kind of been an ongoing event for quite a while. And I'm um, pretty certain, 99% certain this is subsidence from the caldera. Just typical fault systems going on here around the uh, Mount St. Helens area. There's no sign of uh, inflation or any type of volcanic unrest currently there at Mount St. Helens. Uh, getting back to the space weather, uh, as I noted there, we had a M flare kicking up here a few hours ago. Uh, kind of topped off here. Uh, in the low M2 range, not a big M flare, but it's the most recent M flare, M -flare uh, over the last at least seven days here. I believe the last M flare was produced from a uh, Sunspot 3088, which is kind of coming around the bin once again. Look at that. They even got it. Uh, these folks here have it listed as X3088. The bad boy that was producing quite a few M flares is coming back around the bin for another show. Um, I believe this M flare popped off. Let's see exactly where this M flare popped off from. Uh, let's see. It looks like 3098. That was the potential one that uh, was harboring some energy there to produce at least a moderate M flare. Uh, that one did produce a M1.7 to be exact earlier. Uh, this afternoon time frame there is the beautiful image of that flare notice the uh, uh, it's just it's hypnotizing it's an awesome little view there of that flare taking uh, uh, peeking out there on the Sun and we are still currently looking like we're having a proton event notice the polar region seeing some enhanced activity from the po uh, protons hitting the uh, planet very typical when we have a proton event to see that at the uh, polar regions. There is no uh, coronal hole activity facing us. And in fact, the three-day geomagnetic forecast looks green across the board. Not a whole lot of expected uptick in activity. Uh, and this M-flare, looking at the direction here, 
I don't know if it did produce a, a CME or not, but it is somewhat directed away from Earth, so I don't think we're going to have uh, to worry about anything, even if it did produce a, a CME. Uh, any wants to worry about here? Uh, a couple sunspots, as I mentioned, X, the X sunspot uh, 3088 coming around the bend, and um, this guy here not likely going to produce anything significant. There's not a whole lot of complex magnetic fields here in that area. Right now, the, the uh, biggest threat here is going to be 3098, which is kind of turning away from our view and um, will continue to do so. But I think there is a shot of maybe having another M flare uh, before it does depart. 95% chance of a C flare. M flare at 25% chance, X flare around 1, 20% chance of protons, and that's uh, been somewhat elevated throughout the day today, as far as the proton events go. Uh, current space weather conditions here. Uh, we did have the density here from the protons kind of kick up a little bit, kind of getting a little bit of residual um, activity from that event. Things are stabilizing though, it looks like, as far as the speed goes, continuing to decline. BZ, BT component there of the interplanetary magnetic field is pretty stable. And uh, this looks kind of like we're calming back down here in uh, terms of space weather conditions. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? I think that's about it, folks. Not going to make this a super long um, update tonight. We'll give a quick glance here at the Long Valley Super Volcano, see if we've got any swarming going on here around the area of uh, Southern California looking at the seismographs here a couple earthquakes listed on the map look at that uh, one two three and I believe we counted these or uh, I believe the USGS has mentioned these microquakes on their map let's double check here and see uh, what we got looks like a little activity here about five earthquakes or so and that's probably about right they're looking at the map no major swarms to report there at the Long Valley Super Volcano. And again, or Yellowstone. Yellowstone's kind of calming down as well. But uh, these swarms, you know, when they happen, they can come up out of the blue and be pretty intense and then just drop off just like that. But uh, right now, everything looks pretty uh, solid across the board as far as conditions go. No major movement to report across the Canada region. Uh, just some a very small microquake activity in the BC region earlier. Today, uh, looking at the GeoNet for New Zealand, this is the weekend above. Shows uh, some small quakes there in the three range and the two range over the past couple days, but no major swarms to report here around the New Zealand area. Uh, they did have a 4.2, it looks like, about three days ago up here in the North Island, New Zealand. But uh, other than that, looks like just some moderate shaking from that earthquake that was uh, somewhat shallow at about five kilometers. Alrighty, guys, have a good night. We're gonna bounce out of here and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of ready for bed. I don't know why. It's only eight, a little bit after eight o'clock, and I feel like I'm ready for bed. What is it? Something in the air? I don't know. In in all honesty, I haven't really been sleeping all that good at night. Uh, not for sure what's going on and I, I normally sleep a much better when it's uh, cooler outside and it's definitely cooler compared to the 115 degrees that we had there uh, a few days ago a couple days ago for a week so not for sure what's going on and not for sure what's going on so anyone got any remedies on getting a good night's sleep out here um, I know a lot of people take melatonin, and I've tried that before, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, uh, man, I need a good night's sleep. Maybe it's one of those things. I remember my dad always complaining uh, uh, about not getting a good night's sleep as, as he got older. But uh, I don't know. I mean, it just can't figure it out. Can't figure out the sleeping patterns right now. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there, and we will chat you guys sometime tomorrow. Have a good one. Peace out.